Okay. I'm Sasha Golish. My supervisor is Dr. Brian Carney, and my area of study is engineering education, specifically with a focus on mathematics within engineering. Uh, we're looking at the motivation not only of students to take mathematics, but for the instructors to teach mathematics within the engineering context. How did I find my way into this subject? Um, so I actually have known Brian Carney for a couple years, um, and I once upon a time TA'd his course as a volunteer experience, uh, the CIV 300 Terrestrial Systems course. And what's interesting is it's an engineering course where in the classroom you don't speak much about mathematics, but the whole context of it is mathematics-based. And what's interesting is that the students often in the tutorials are very frustrated by the fact that there's no conversation about mathematics within the classroom. Now, Dr. Carney um, comes back and he says, well, but you've taken all of this mathematics within your other engineering courses and specifically on their own in the engineering context. And the mathematics is simple enough that you should have it. Um, and while this is outside of sort of Dr. Br uh, Carney's, I guess, specialty within his research, he has a general interest in it and he's taught the mathematics course. And so we wanted to look at how we could actually make the learning in the other courses within engineering better. So as you know, I'm a runner. Uh, I came back to track and field very late in life as a track and field athlete goes. I came back in 2014, I ran my first 3000 which was my opening track race and I PB'd by 32 seconds which is pretty unheard of. So this summer I went after trying to make the Pan Am Games team and it was a goal that I set last summer with my coach, with Ross, to see you know how far could I push my limits and when I heard you know with the Pan Am Games in my backyard I really wanted to participate here. There was never sort of this idea or notion of winning a medal or, or being on the podium, and, but as it drew closer, I, I thought, well, I want to stand on the podium in my own backyard with my parents and all my friends in the stadium. Why did I decide to do a PhD? I've always really been interested in research and delving deeper into a subject. Um, I once upon a time actually wanted to be a doctor to do better for the world, and this kind of became a combination of doing something better in a really broad-stroked concept. I, uh, my background in coaching, I looked at teaching and I thought, okay, as a coach we've really blended these, these skill acquisitions from teaching, but we haven't looked at it from the coaching perspective. Now, how can I make the world a better place? Well, if I can make mathematics within engineering a better place, maybe people want to learn more, get more creative, and actually develop things across the board in engineering that improve the rest of the world. And if my tiny portion is just that I motivated one person to do something better in engineering, then maybe that, you know, that's exponential from there and they motivate two other people and it grows. So when running started to really take off, people suggested that I drop my PhD, that I could pick it up again at any time. But again, I need that balance. I need that, that challenge in my brain every day on those, those moments where I'm sitting around. I don't want to just be sitting around watching television. I don't enjoy television. I want something rewarding. And so, with this time, I can balance challenging my mind with challenging my body. And I really enjoy having the balance and the pressure of both. There's a, there's a great TED talk from Kelly McGonigal. And you can look at stress in two ways. You can look at it as a burden, or you can look at it and say, I'm going to have a courage reaction, and I'm going to take this on, and I'm going to be positive about it. And it's really interesting how your body adapts and adjusts. And I think if I didn't have that bit of stress and adjust, I wouldn't do as well in either one. Part of my research delves into positive psychology and a blend of sports psychology, or, or I, what I would actually prefer to now call performance psychology. One of the things that we do a really poor job in in engineering is motivating our students to be interested in what they're learning in. There's this old school concept of instilling fear in students. You, you must go through this rite of passage to become an engineer. And all of these students or I should say most of these students come in really excited about engineering and really excited about math and science and instead of embracing that joy and that excitement for things we almost squash it and say you know what we went down this path you must follow this rite of passage as well and I think that shift is coming and it's coming in teaching as well I mean we've we've changed how we teach K to 12 it was you know stepping stones to teaching how we teach at university and I think that the new, the new student will be excited to learn again and it won't be about the professor being the sage on the stage but there'll, there'll be this interaction where it's not just pedagogy but this idea of, of andragogy where they share ideas and build from each other.
So one of the tips I have for staying organized is to use a series of post-it notes. And it, it's an idea that comes from using cue cards. So you have headings, and these headings are must be done today, or immediate task something in the near future, and, and just an idea of something that you have or might need to be done. And the idea of using post is, it, is that it can move between those subheadings. And so something that was really important, maybe something comes up and it actually becomes less important, but as a deadline approaches, something that's on the back burner needs to be moved to the immediate list. And then once that task is complete, you can take that post-it out and, and get rid of it. And I think you know, as we play with different learning styles and different teaching techniques, I think the classroom is going to revolutionize. And I think we'll see, you know, more technology. We'll see the use of computers in classrooms, students learning on their own at home, working in small groups. I think it'll be much more realistic to what we then see in industry and how we, we work as groups um, than what we see right now.